afternoon folks, welcome to the new brew shed. He says, with an echo. So this morning, uh, as well as chopping down some of the back bar, I've spent most of the day putting the Dutchman into the bar to prevent any further cracking or splitting at the end of the timber, the shakes for instance. So uh, I think we've got most of them in place. One or two little imperfections that I can get rid of by just adding a little bit of sawdust and glue uh, because I'm not going to be able to get any filler to match and resin I think would be the wrong colour. Oh my face feels a little bit tight because I've just had a dust mask on for half an hour. But let's take you off the tripod over to the work and uh, I'll just show you a few of the highlights that we've put into the bar. And uh, once we've got the back bar finished, which is just over here at the moment, then we'll be ready to apply some varnish to the whole. I may as well do it all in one hit. So I want all the back bar and everything done before we varnish this lot. But as far as the front bar goes, we've pretty much cracked it. Let's check out these Dutchmen. So here are a couple right on the end of the bar as we're looking down it. Now these two little bow ties are just going to prevent this crack from getting any worse. And as you can see, they're flush to the table surface and they're almost perfectly laid in. Once this is wet or varnished, I have wet it to sand it of course, you can't really tell that there's any outline on there. It just sits in as a nice inlay. Then if we walk a little bit further down the table towards where these little rock pools are if you like and they have come up lovely. You can see that once we get the finish on we're going to see right down to the bottom of them. This is where I had most of the work to do. So here we have put six different sized Dutchmen in. Again they all went in nicely. Some of them actually had a little bit of trouble getting the perfect size so there's a little bit of glue around the edges that's where that darkening will be but I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out and they should prevent those cracks from running any further down the bar top. Just coming further down here we had one just near the join where I had to join two boards together a little shake running in there that direction so that's been nicely finished off you can see here again little area where it wasn't quite a perfect fit but i think with a bit of sawdust that i've saved from these we'll just be able to fill that little gap in and then finally on the end i wasn't too bothered about these two to be fair in terms of how they looked but they turned out quite well but these are right at the back so they weren't a massive issue to get them absolutely perfect. And Gemma just arrives, not on time, always late. It's not lunchtime, is it? It's three o'clock, I'm guessing, for yes. kids. Wow, yeah. So, yes. Well, I'm glad you're going to pick them up and not me. I could do without it. Look at that fake smile, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm late. And you're <laughs> always late. I need a car key. Right. So Gemma out, oh my god, look at the redness on my face from that dust mask. I just saw Gemma out with a key, the here, look. Right here. And uh, I'm going to go back into the unit. Uh, we had a steel delivery. I'll show you that before I get on with some more of the tables. Alright, boy. So this is the five inch square box that we got for the centre of the tables. I can tell you now, it weighs an absolute ton. 173 kilograms in total this was. So once we get this cut up and bolted underneath the tables, I don't think anybody is gonna be moving them. In fact, I'm starting to think it was slightly overkill, but it will definitely be unique.
it's a bit smoky in here, folks. Woo! So, yeah. I just left Stuart next door, um, sanding back the back bar that we looked at earlier on, while I put this pedestal table together. Well, what do you think? So there's going to be four of these, and these are going to stand in front of the windows with uh, stools around them, and this is what you're going to get. Just enough room to put your pint on. And uh, it's going to be patinaed and finished just like the other tables were. So let's just take a quick peek at it uh, in its interim stages. It's not finished yet, but uh, I'm quite happy to have got that far today and of course done all of the bow ties or Dutchman in the other bar top. So we'll have a look at this and then we'll shoot next door and check out how Stuart's getting along. So I will be leaving most of these welds raw as they are and underneath the bar top we're just going to fix a couple of maybe four brackets on to screw straight into the table and then the table will be bolted directly to this top frame using the coach bolts that we filed out for here and then we'll put a patina on seal everything with varnish and it will be complete I think they're gonna look the mutts nuts once it's got that beautiful patina on there of course the big job is getting all of this mill scale off it is a ball ache Right, let's leave that there and go and check out what Stuart's up to next door. Come on. Look at the freaking mess you've made, buddy. Is that what I've got here? I think I've got all dicks out from you complaining. Yeah, a couple of things I notice. You shred him belt to pieces. Was that the black stuff is? Yeah, so. I it was, yeah. And then look, look at the bottom. I'll write on the side, but to make the belt move that way, you twist it up. Yeah, well I did move it over slightly because I thought it needed all no, it needed to be on there. No, it wants to be hanging off a little bit this side. Yeah, it was. Move yeah. It. Well, there we go. Stu's just had sanding techniques 101 from his big brother. A hey, shredding belt to pieces, Toad Lad was. But I did it when I first started using it, so, you know. It happens. We have to learn somewhere, don't we? So I'm back to uh, my lovely gamma ray. Now all of the welding fumes and dust has settled into it. It's about ready to poison me properly. So provided I'm still alive folks and uh, I haven't died of asphyxiation, that's easy to say after a few beers, then I will obviously see you tomorrow. Cheers.